Hello everyone, welcome to CISA this much. So today we have with us Anmol Mehta from UK. So Anmol has recently qualified his CISA. And by the way, uh, you know, he has scored 643, which is a very, very good score. You know, so first of all, Anmol, heartiest congratulations. And you know, like, how do you feel? Okay, so 643, it's not, a, it's, it's a very good score. In fact, you know, anyone who gets more than 600, it is very, very good score. It is very difficult to, you know, uh, get into that point. So how do you feel? Uh, yes, Adija, thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for that. And it's good. It's, I feel great. And in fact, even you should feel great because it was just because of you. It's just your your direction and my hard work that I was able to score this much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, but but it is also your hard work. I like to introduce, like you know, about I just like to you know uh, say something about his past, about his background. Okay, so basically he's a chartered accountant from India, and after taking uh, internal audit experience, I think for three years. Like after, um, so I was into audit and assurance for three years and then, uh, one and a half year in internal audits, one and a half year in internal audits. And then, and then, and then he has moved to UK for pursuing his master's in finance. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And after finishing his master's in finance uh, and after that he was, uh, he wanted to move in it audits. Right. And that's the reason he has uh, given his CSA exam. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so I, did, I did work with GDPR in between uh, the data privacy laws. Okay. GDPR. Yeah. Okay. And after that, I thought I would move into internal audits. So uh, technology audits. Uh, so actually, you know what? So why I'm asking about your background? Because, you know, I I get, there are many people, you know, across the globe, you know, they ask me, they just keep on asking me these, co these questions again and again. And that's the reason I, I, you know, I keep these questions with, you know, in, in almost all the interviews that, uh, there are people from accounts background, there are people from finance background, there are, there are people from audits, internal audits. Uh, external audits, these people, they want to enter in IT, but they are scared of entering in IT because, you know, they say that Aditya, we don't have experience in IT. Uh, if let's say, if, if, if we clear CISA, will we get a job or whether, whether IT audit, is it a good uh, career path or should we only uh, stay in, in, in whatever field we are working currently or should we shift to IT audits? So, you know, that's the reason I just wanted to people to know about your background so that, you know, so, so guys, if this person is an example in front of you, so he is having, you know, he was in audits, then internal audits, then, you know, so, you know, after that, he, he is now, now currently he has cleared CISA and very soon he'll be entering in IT audit area, right? Yeah, yeah. So what do you want to say to these people? Like, you know, like, so these questions I get, you know, so is, is there a demand for CISA course? Like, what's the thing? Like, and especially in UK, because you are from UK, you moved into UK long back. I think, you know, I think two, two and a half years back, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One and a half years. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so what do you want to say? Like, you know, is there, is there a good demand for CISA professionals? Like, you know, if, if someone clears CISA, is getting a job difficult for them? Like, what's the thing? Uh, so Aditya, you raised multiple questions. First of all, you say whether uh, someone can get into IT audits or whether someone should get into IT audits. Uh, so I would say IT audit, it's a very broad field. So uh, there are many, you know, many opportunities available into IT audits. There's a misconception in many people in accounting that IT audits is just security auditing. But like, uh, like I work into GDPR audit, so that's regulations. So working in IT with regulations. So that's a separate area altogether, separate area into IT audits. Then there is uh, data analysis. That is again, not security. That is a separate area, reg tech, ed tech. There are many, many opportunities available in IT audits. So uh, definitely you can get into IT audits to answer your question. Yes, even account, people from accounts and audit can get into IT audits. But I would rather say that people should get into IT audits nowadays. Because you see accounts and audit and all this area, so they, they have been evolving since many years. Like uh, my seniors, my managers, where I, uh, whom, with whom I used to work, 
they sometimes say that they used to work using calculators for 20 like years back so now uh, you you would not see people working with calculators then after calculators you uh, there were general tools that came into market like excel then there are data analytics software like idea acl that people have been using now i what i think is there would be many many more technology evolutions with blockchain and those things where auditing industry would change so this industry have been evolving and it would evolve to a great extent in the near future. So that is the reason people should get into IT audits now rather than people can, because if people can, that's for sure, but people should. Uh, the other point that I would like to make here is that earlier IT was a part of organization and uh, a team, a department in an organization. Now IT is the core business. Like you see uh, these days, uh, businesses like Zomato or Uber Eats here, like Uber, like Zomato or Uber Eats, that's not a food company, that's a technology company. Like Uber Cars, that's not a tech, that's not a taxi company, that's a technology company. So the core business is technology, and they need more tech auditors rather than financial auditors. I obviously agree they need financial auditors. I'm not denying that, but since there was a less demand for IT auditors earlier because the legacy companies they did not require that many IT auditors. But now with this tech companies, they need much more auditors. So there is much more demand for IT auditors now. So to answer your question, uh, you said, should people get into IT audits? I would say, yes, definitely people should get into IT audits and people can get into IT audits because there is a need for uh, people having knowledge, a sense of business as well. Like accountants and audits, they have a very good grasp of the business. They understand the business better. So now with this certification CISA, they also get knowledge for technology. So it's a good, uh, you know, combination of knowing the business, knowing the accountancy, and then knowing the technology aspect as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, you know, uh, I think you were also talking about the uh, current demand and supply, you know, for, for CISA professionals in your country, UK, especially you were saying that, you know, the demand is very high supplies, not that, uh, you know, in the market. So, yeah. So can, can you just, so, uh, uh, you see, there are not many CISA certifieds at the moment in the globe, like here in UK, when I saw on LinkedIn, there are just 6,000 CISA certified people here. Yeah. And out of that 6,000 people, if you see, not more than 500 people are from a software accountancy background, like ACA or CCA. So there are just 500 people who have a combination of this degree, CISA and chartered accountancy. And I don't think so. Most of them would be out in the job market. So there's, there's no competition, by the way. <laughs> no way, no way. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's a huge, there's a huge uh, gap. There's a huge gap uh, between the demand and supply for technology audits. Further, uh, these days, even you know, banks they are coming up with many technology audit tools, and this this was just about technology audit tools. But even in internal audit, like there are lots of opportunities available for internal audit. But in internal audit, also. Uh, with banks, with technology companies, uh, with fintechs, with the, all those companies, half of your scope would be as a technology auditor. Even though you would be working as an internal auditor, the open vacancy would be open as an internal auditor, but half of your scope would be into technology audits. Okay, but the, but the work will be as an IT auditor, even though you are getting a job as an internal auditor, but your work will be, yeah, yeah, yeah. what your point. Yeah. Yes. yeah. In fact, you know, yeah, so it's good that you have made this point because nowadays, uh, internal audit is incomplete without IT, you know, IT controls reviewing part and, you know, so that's the reason. And in fact, IT audit is a part of internal audit. So, you know, so internal audit, you know, there are people who say that, you know, they want to work in internal audits. So can they do CISA? Yeah, they can do CISA because, you know, it's not that CISA will not help you in internal audit. It will definitely help you. Okay. So even internal audit, it is incomplete without IT audits. Right. Yeah. So I, I agree with your point. I, I would like to add one point here. Like, see, uh, you must be aware of SOX audit. SOX is a US regulation. Okay. Now even UK is coming with their own SOX. So just in the start of this year, the government announced that uh, they have already planned and they have confirmed that they are going to come up with UK SOX. So that is a very big opportunity as well. See, SOX is basically 
technology related thing uh, there you need to implement covid covid 2019 generally uh, that is a framework that most of the companies implement and covid is a uh, implementation framework implementation for it so i uh, you need to do it control testing for sock sockets so with uk sock sockets coming uh, i think there are many many opportunities available here in uk because i i was once uh, having a look at the uh, big four's analysis on sock sockets so uh, they also have mentioned that they need they need more recruitments into uh, people having knowledge of sock sockets yeah Yeah. Agree, agree with your points. Okay, so Anmol, so you have cleared CISA, and I think uh, you know, like uh, I think you have cleared it in like like six months. Like how much time you have taken to clear CISA? Four months. Four months. Four months. Okay, so you are also doing full time job, right? You are you are doing full time yeah. job. Yeah. So how many hours you had to devote for doing CISA? Like you know, and again, so this question is also people ask me that you know if they are doing a full time job, will they get time to do CISA? Will they get time to study for CISA? Is it very difficult to finish CISA? Like so, so you have finished it in four months, and that took you six forty three. Oh, that's that, that's really good. That's really impressive. Yeah. So like, uh, can you just share your strategy and your like how many how many hours you have devoted every day? And and not 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 only on weekdays but also on weekends. Like, were you disciplined? Like, what was your daily schedule? Uh, so see, in, throughout the week, I used to study. Uh, at after the work, like here in UK, like in India, I used to struggle working long hours. But here in UK, I work only till five thirty. So after coming home, uh, to time to get my food, I would used to study for uh three hours a day, roughly three hours, maybe more or less sometimes. uh in weekends i used to study for 7 hours or 8 hours that's it but the thing is that uh in january i took a 15 days leave so 15 days throughout study so in uh, in 3 months october november december uh i i studied uh 3 hours in weekdays and then 8 hours in weekends in december's christmas time i studied a lot and then in january i i i, I was working for 3 days and then uh four days leave so i working i was just working three days so that's the time when i capitalized i revised everything uh i i attempted the uh, uh, mock questions uh from the uh, institute's book and some questions that they gave me so that is the way i started here yeah uh, okay so and how was your experience with uh, cisa this much like what was your overall experience like did you find this uh, entire course entire process helpful like so i think it was wonderful it was really wonderful uh so i would say the best thing about cisa this much is it's it, it's within its name the usp of cisa this much is within within its name this much so what i used to feel in the start that crm crm is very i used to feel that's uh, very dry so you you will get bored at some point of time after reading that because i am not a person from technology i am person from finance background so reading it the uh, some of the chapters some of the domains in crm they are good some of the domains in crm they are like the domain 3 domain 3 is not my expertise but so that was a very dry but with your video lectures they were really exciting so what what used to happen is that during the time i used to work for my job and when i come late uh, in the evening and uh, reading the crm at that time in the evening time it's very tiresome but what happens with the videos is that you don't get tired listening to the videos and your videos are very energetic i have to say you keep shouting in your videos so uh, in in a way it's it's very exciting to see those videos and you don't feel bored you feel you you like and enjoy grasping new knowledge from there so that was one of the good thing i felt about your course yeah, okay so uh, what will be your last message to the people who are currently preparing for the cisa exam or they have this plan to give the cisa exam in the near future in your country or your, your your neighboring country european countries you know what message you would like to get, give to these people who are watching this video currently uh see one thing that i regret about is i started cisa late like i was thinking studying for cisa back in 2020 but i cleared it in 
so don't delay that i think it's it you can comfortably study and give attempt the exam pass the exam in first attempt within just 4 months and and that also you don't need very hard work 3 months can be comfortable just the last one month one month should be a uh, very hard working so within 4 months a planned 4 month you can complete your cisa so what i would say is don't wait for a right opportunity because you never know when when an opportunity strikes internally within your company or externally so just start, give it a try just give it a try start studying as soon as possible and this is the best time i think to start studying for cisa so don't wait for that in fact i would also say that don't even wait with after completing cisa there are many certifications or many other uh, knowledge that would support your csr's knowledge like if you are in data analytics learn tabulae learn power bi that would help you with data analytics if you are into regulations like gdpr there are many certifications small certifications not as as difficult or as a uh, long demanding as csr but there are some small certifications for gdpr you can do that if you are if you like securities security then you can study cism that's a good certification for securities so support your cisa knowledge even after cisa and start your cisa as soon as possible yeah i agree with you i think it's a good uh, good answer and you have uh, really guided well okay so thank you so much for uh, guiding the people and thank you for joining us and uh, hartish congratulations okay thank you thank you very much aditya for having me thank you yeah.